a model steamboat named Edith Part 5, and this one's called In the Bath with Edith. This project's temporarily been on hold for a while, I've been waiting for the good weather to arrive, and this year it's taken some time. It's now the 6th of May and I'm editing the video, which I did yesterday on the 5th of May. And what I'm about to do is thoroughly clean the inside of the boat. A friend of mine brought me this really nice bath. It really is a good bath, is this? It's very heavy and it's perfect for the job. So here I'm floating the boat in the bath and the boat is currently unballasted. And to say the boat leaks is a bit of an understatement. Within a couple of minutes it looks like this. This large model boat has a metal hull. There's no wood in there other than the supports for the engine and the boiler. And the entire hull is made up of metal plates soldered together over a former, which is no mean feat. As I rock the boat, you can see just how much water's coming into the hull. If I put enough weight in the boat to drop it down to the water line, the water would come in a lot quicker. So what can be done about this? Well, the first job is to clean out the inside of the boat so I can see how bad it is. At the moment, the inside of the boat is very dirty, oily, and also the paint is flaking very badly. The outside of the boat is very dirty as well. Here, I've fitted the superstructure in place, and the superstructure is very dusty too. This model boat needs a thorough clean before I can even start the job. The sail's a bit dirty too, but this is not a big problem, because in reality, on an old fishing boat, the sail would not be clean, so that's not too bad. I don't have any real worries about fixing up this old boat, it's just going to take a bit longer than I planned. So to start with I removed the superstructure and I put lots of this inside, this is commercial washing up liquid. I could have used TFR, traffic film remover, but I don't like the smell of this stuff and it also seems to burn your hands if you get in contact with it. This however is normal washing up liquid. Temporarily I fitted a big lump of ballast in the bottom of the boat when I put the superstructure on because otherwise it would have just capsized. So I removed the big lump of ballast and now I'm inside the boat with a brush that I found in the kitchen. It's one of those brushes that you use for washing up and it's absolutely ideal for the job. So now with the inside of the boat thoroughly scrubbed with washing up liquid and water I'm just going to leave the boat in the bath for a while for the washing up liquid to cut into the grease. I must say I'm really impressed with this bath, it must have been very, very expensive. My friend who was a builder just had it in his yard and it was full of leaves and debris, so when I said, do you know where I can get a bath from? This is what I got. Thinking about it, this would make an absolutely wonderful acid bath, but it's a bit public in the middle of the garden, so I think for the moment I'll stick with my plastic dustbin acid bath in the workshop. So where's the boat gone? Well, it's on the picnic table on its side. And now I'm calling in the heavy artillery. This is a pressure washer. And for the inside, I'm using it on full pressure because I need to get rid of as much of this loose paint as possible. It might seem a very brutal thing to do to a model boat, but it's very necessary. This is a very old model boat and the mechanical structure of this hull is not strong. I would guess it's about 50 years old. And it's done okay, it's still in one piece basically, but it's not going to last much longer if I don't do this job properly. Some of the solder joints that hold the plates together have given way, so if I don't do this properly, then water's going to continuously get into the gaps between the plates. After thoroughly cleaning this hull and letting it dry, I'm going to glass fibre the inside. I'm going to use epoxy resin and glass cloth. This will be the third model steamboat that I've renovated for this customer, and the first boat was also a metal hulled boat at about the same age as this one, but structurally it wasn't anywhere near as bad as this one. It was a much smaller boat and it was far too heavy, it sat very low in the water and yes, some water did come into the hull when we were sailing it, but not enough to sink it. The problem with the first boat really was that it was just too heavy. But this one is entirely different, it's such a large model boat that the amount of ballast that's going to be required in this to make it sit at the correct depth in the water is going to be rather a lot. I didn't put the ballast in the boat permanently because the hull isn't strong enough to hold it. However, the boat will be a lot stronger once I've glass clothed the interior. So I propose to fit the steam engine and the boiler and the gas tank and the burner and the radio control system and then some ballast. There will have to be some permanent ballast fitted, but the big pieces I'm going to make removable so they can be put in once it's in the water. Inside this hull, which has a cavernous space in the bow, I'm going to fit a water tank. 
I'm going to convert the entire front part of the boat into a water tank. This steam plant has a water pump that's driven from the crankshaft, so it will be constantly feeding a small amount of water from the tank to the boiler. And the good thing about this is that when the boat's bow starts to rise in the water, you know you need to bring the boat in to refill the water tank. As you can see from this clip, quite a lot of the paint is just falling off the inside of the hull. That is, with a bit of help from my small pressure washer on full power. By keeping the pressure washer very close to the inside of the hull, the blast of the water removes the paint, but it only removes paint that's not firmly stuck to the hull. If the paint isn't removed by this pressure blast, then it's stuck to the hull and it's going to be okay. The steel plates that this boat's made out of are made from tin steel, and I was told by the son of the man who built this boat that the metal for the plates was cut out of baked bean tins, lots of them. Now it's time to clean up the superstructure. And here I'm using exactly the same principle as I did with the inside of the hull. Applying concentrated washing up liquid with a small brush. And then once again I use the pressure washer, but it's set to an entirely different setting. This is not full power, this is a wide, much more gentle spray. I do not want to remove the paint from the superstructure. In fact, the general plan is not to do a lot with the external paintwork because it sort of looks good, it's part of the boat. But I will have to paint the red part underneath. This is damaged, some of the plates have lifted and there's been attempts at putting filler in there, so this needs doing properly. I don't use heat on the hull. It would be quite a simple job, I suppose, to re-solder it, but as one set of plates were re-soldered, the ones adjacent to them would come loose. That would be a disaster. So instead I propose to enlarge the gaps to get some JB Weld in there. JB Weld is a two-part epoxy mix that has some steel in it and it's amazing stuff to use. It takes 24 hours to set and once it's in there, it's in there very permanently. I've used this JB Weld stuff for a while because quite a few viewers started to recommend it and I gave it a try and they were right, it really is very good stuff. And some viewers mentioned that they've used it for repairing cracked blocks on internal combustion engines. This job took quite a long time, and if you look inside the hull now, you can see quite a lot of the paint is missing, and I'm still doing it. If you look on the top of the picnic table, you can see that there are quite a lot of flecks of the removed paint on there. I need a method, really, to get the paint out of the hull. Once it's thoroughly dry, I suppose I could use a vacuum cleaner, but to remove the large amount that's currently in there, I'm going to do this. Put the boat back in the bath, and I'm going to sink it. The logic being that the lighter paint particles will float to the top and if I shake the boat about under the water then a lot of these particles will just float out of the hull and once it's all dried I can use a vacuum cleaner to remove the small amount that are left. So with the hull now back in the bath and a hose pipe inside the hull pouring water in at quite a good rate the boat is now slowly sinking. The copyright laws prevent me using the music from the film Titanic at this moment but just like in the film the boat sinks anyway. There it goes. It's interesting to see that the hull sinks in the bath pretty much like a full-size boat would sink. Only everything happens faster. If I slow this clip down, so this is a replay, you'll see what I mean. Once the boat was at the bottom of the bath, I removed the hose pipe and then went in with the pressure washer to create some turbulence in the hull and flush out all the bits of paint. You can see them floating about in the water very clearly now. Well, that's nearly the end of this video. What I'm going to do now is remove the boat from the water, pull the plug out of the bath to drain the water out of it and sit the boat across the bath and let the sunshine do its stuff. The heat of the sun will dry out the hull. And this is the final sequence with the hull upside down and the bath being dried by the sun. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.